Personal story segment tonight, 27-year-old Sean Stone, son of controversial director Oliver Stone, converted to Islam in Iran on Valentine's Day. The younger Stone is also a filmmaker and was traveling to Iran to produce a movie about a Persian poet. He joins us now from New York City. Mr. Stone, we have no beef that you converted to Islam. We applaud all religious people of conscience. But your association with Iran is interesting. <laughs> Since that country is an enemy to America and many other countries in the world, just heard a discussion with Colonel Peters um, about the Israelis maybe getting ready to attack Iran. What say you? Um, well, in the first place, I wouldn't say, you know, the conversion is an interesting word because I don't believe you can, can convert from one God, from the same God, from one God to the same God. So I've always believed in the same Judeo-Christian God, and I think it's a misunderstanding of Islam to say that it's, um, Allah is a different God, it's just a different name for the same one. So I accepted Islam, and I think it's an important move. Uh, also politically, you know, if you want to understand the history of this region, because, you know, the Persians uh, have been, you know, Muslim for going on, what, 1400 years? They have many Jews in Iran, and actually I spoke with some when I was in Isfahan, which is where I uh, took the, uh, the vow. And, uh, you know, the Iranian people are very intelligent people. I had great discussions with um, politicians. I met with the president briefly. I had discussions with the advisor to the supreme leader. And uh, every time I was, you know, I had these conversations, I was very clear in saying, you know, let's stop with this down with America nonsense. And, you know, they have a problem with our government, and it has to do with imperial, imperialism as a, as a long-standing policy in this region, going back to the British Empire. But they understood my point of view, and I think it really helped uh, for the American image, frankly, by my being there and having these conversations and having this dialogue. Well, I, I, don't, I don't have any beef with you being there. It's just a matter of how you present it. I mean, you know, your father's a very controversial guy because he, you know, had some kind things to say about Hugo Chavez and Fidel Castro in, in the past. But look, when you have a guy like Ahmadinejad, you said you met him for a little while, when he makes a public pronouncement that the Holocaust never happened, that uh, if he could, he'd drive the Israelis into the sea, you know, you're dealing with a guy who is uh, an extremist. He's a fanatic. And it would be like if you were in uh, Germany in the 1930s and you were talking to Himmler and, and you were talking to all these guys and you were trying to get them to be reasonable, which uh, I assume you're trying to do. Um, you basically can be seen as a pawn there. You, you can be seen as somebody who's being used because, uh, you know, you come from a family that's very well known. Uh, that could be. I mean, with Ahmadinejad, he's, he's a little bit misunderstood because there are many factions in that country. And, I, and he said some sensational things. But, for example, he said, you know, Israel should be dissolved insofar as he's talking about the West Bank specifically. And I think that's a well, point wait, of wait, 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 wait. If, Look, 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 the one thing that he said that's undeniable was he said that the Holocaust never happened. And once you get into that kind of a fringe lunatic assessment, all right, your father's Jewish. I mean, come on. You, once you get there into those territories, there's nowhere else to go, Mr. Stone. you totally, got to know that, man. To totally agree. His point on the Holocaust has always been if the, holo the Holocaust taking place in Germany, from Europe, from European Christians as well, you know, going back to pogroms in Russia, why should that influence Israeli policy in regards to the Palestinians, in regards to the Middle East? That's always been his point on that matter. Uh, there's no room for Holocaust denial, of course. I would never agree with that. But I just think that it's, it's simple, it's simplistic to say that he is a fanatic. When you, when you talk with these people, you know, the point is we have to have a dialogue about Israel in this, in this region because it's still, a it's still a problem. And I think we need to open it up. And right. I'd love for Jimmy Carter, for example, to go there and start this dialogue again. You know, I don't think Jimmy Carter is going to Iran. I mean, he doesn't have real good memories from the first time around with them. They <laughs> kicked his butt. They did. All right, I got 30 seconds left. You okay with Iran having a nuclear weapon? You yourself? I am because it's a republic and there's there are factions and it's like it's it's very much like this country there's a lot of unrest inside the inside that country from the from the economic point of view I think you know there could be an occupied Tehran coming in the next com you know months or years because you know it, 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 it's a dynamic place and uh, it, yeah, it you know, is but not, if they have fanatics. a nuke these if they have a nuke then you're, you're putting a nuclear weapon into the hands of very very unstable fanatical people in my opinion and it can't be allowed to happen. Mr. Stone, we appreciate it very much. Thanks for coming on tonight.